and we are back. Welcome. Good evening. Alzheimer's. What they forget to tell you. Episode 19, podcast 18. That's right. We apologize for the earlier disturbance. Um, we're back in full effect. Hopefully now we've got our lives together here. Um, I was asking you before, how was your week? It was me. Oh. Oh. Me. What? What do you do? What do you do? Me. Isn't that like the M E H, right? That's an M E H. Yes. Like me. Okay. Yeah. But not a Trinidadian oh, M E H. Like That's like a Canadian oh. M E H. Oh. Okay. See, mm-hmm. I got the best of both worlds. Well, it's, it was like a. Mm. Yes, we can see comments now. Hi, Nick. Hello, leading lady. What in the house? What's going down? We got Christian. What? We, it's got, Christian. It's not put Christian. Some, listen, put some flair mm-hmm. in his name. Maybe he appreciates I'm the flair. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. So if people just call you Karen. Yeah, they do actually. Well, if somebody called you Karen. I would hate it. Hi, Bill. Hi, Nadira. Maybe her name is Nadira. Nadira. No, too soon. Hi, good evening. I got nothing. <laughs> I can't even comment. Hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. Okay, let's um, let's get right to it because we were on before and we made a few boo boos. So okay, so you, me. Let me just start by asking you because there was a couple of uh, podcasts. I think it was two or three podcasts ago where. Um, there was an inquiry about your dad and how he dealt with um, the diagnosis once he found out that your mom actually was officially diagnosed with the disease. As well, I wanted to find out um, the experience you had seeing your mom go through the death of your father while being sick with disease with this disease as well. Um, and uh, I think let's start with that. And I had mentioned earlier, in case you guys are first time viewers and don't know much of the history, both of our dads have transitioned. Um, her father was my godfather. He was. He was my godfather. And um, he passed away very recently after her mom got diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, okay, so to recap, my mom was diagnosed at 57. Um, she was a registered nurse. She was working in Trinidad at Mount Hope Hospital at the time, and she was coming to um, Toronto to come and help me with my newborn, Jalen. And she was just doing a little bit of out of characteristic things, which, you know. Like? Uh, well, the formula was the big mm-hmm. one. Well, I, I, I spoke about it before, but prior to her even arriving um, in Canada, she kept asking me over and over, when's the baby coming? When's the baby coming? When's the baby coming? And of course, now I know that's one of the signs, right? Repeating questions. And she, she was asked, I thought she was just really excited, mm-hmm. but it was because she couldn't remember every time I told her, like August. August August and you know she's calling me long distance and it's not like every day so when she called it didn't dawn on me like why is she asking me the same question over and over it was mm-hmm. just like oh she's just really so excited she can't wait but anyways that was I guess the first sign however when she did come um, you know shortly after I had asked her to mix formula my son was on formula and she gave it to him concentrate so I knew for sure something was wrong because she would never make that mistake. Being a registered nurse, of course not. Right. So we went to the doctor and he did a mini mental exam, which is usually the first um, step step to see. And I, I just want to say something because my mom was cheating on the exam. Uh-huh. Yep, she sure was. <laughs> like, there's a Uh, you have to draw a clock which is usually the first sign that you can tell Um, and it's sort of I think it's 10 to 3 I can't remember exactly 
but they'll ask you to draw the face of a clock and do a time. And if you have dementia or Alzheimer's, um, you struggle with, with that, with, with knowing where the, the, the large hand goes and the small hand goes. And she was looking at the doctor's watch because she was cheating. But then I thought, there's nothing wrong with her. She knows how to cheat. But <laughs> she didn't forget how to cheat. Anyways, I digress again. <laughs> Stay focused. Okay, so <laughs> needless to say, she didn't do well <laughs> on that mini mental exam. And, and I thought it was, uh, again, I thought maybe, you know, you're still, you're still in denial too because they ask you, like, who's the prime minister in it? And I'm thinking, well... Not everybody knows that in their right mind. Well, yeah. well, you should. But I mean, my mom lived in Trinidad at the time. So is it fair? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then they asked her where she was. Like, at the, my doctor at the time was in the city center upstairs. And then I guess they asked her where she was. And that wasn't fair either because, like, she technically... You know, I thought they were, like, a little... I think it was biased a little bit, I thought. Mind you, of course, she did have Alzheimer's, so how biased was it? Let's keep it moving. All right. Anyways, she had, and then she got the diagnosis. Um, she didn't do well on that test, and he said, and again, I always say no true words were spoken. He said, your life, is, she has Alzheimer's, and your life is going to change, and it did immediately. So when I, I was, I, again, uh, I'm not going to edit the story. I was angry with my father um, because I would think he should be the one that should have told me that something was sure. wrong, not the other way around. But I can imagine he was probably in heavy denial. No, he just, I don't, maybe, I don't know. He just, things that she stopped doing, he just didn't, like I told you, she stopped cooking. And he was going, yeah. Like things that she did for all the time, all her life for you. Now she doesn't want to do it, and you didn't think that was weird, but okay. So he didn't, he didn't know. So I was very angry with him at the very beginning. So Brianna asked, "How did you cope?" At the beginning, um, I went into go mode. So that's what I do, right? I, I immediately it was okay. Well, I need her health card. I need to apply for CPP disability. Like I went into go. You know, I called my dad. I said I needed all her her information. information, and I was very abrupt with him, which I'm, ne you know, that's a big no no if you know my dad. But I was, and then, but I guess he understood. He understood why I was upset, mm -hmm. and um, then it was a series of appointments. So that you didn't really have time to think at the beginning. It was just go, 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 mm -hmm. right? Like it was neurologist appointments. It was, she had to get a brain scan and she went to see San, Dr. Sandra Black at Sunnybrook. She, it was just, you know, a slew of appointments. And Were I, you in immediate, like find solution mode? Did you still feel like, you know, there were things that you could do to not cure it, but were you, did you believe that it was as bad as it was or did you think okay there's a possibility I could really help her get out of this or that you know she can get back to the way she was before or yeah because remember at the beginning she's not presenting like she said yeah like it and it, it wasn't like immediately I can't remember right she was still herself so that part was hard mm -hmm. so and a lot of the times when she was acting out of herself you had to keep reminding yourself it's the disease and not her well I think the the diagnosis made her change like the immediate you know yeah I like can soon as she heard those words Alzheimer's she immediately became apathetic depressed you know like it was like a switch of course hi Aunt Pauline that's Brianna's Aunt Pauline um hi Nigel hi Luann yeah I can imagine I guess that would be something similar if anybody were to get uh, a devastating you know, a piece of news like that about their health, whether it's cancer or any type of other disease, I can't, I can't imagine you can just get that type of response and then just think that your life is going to be the same, right? And I do have, I do remember something like um, when my mom, well, my, well, when my mom lived in Trinidad, she was the private nurse because see, Alzheimer's was so stigmatized. Now I remember 
that um, she was a private nurse to the president at the time. His wife mm -hmm. developed Alzheimer's, and they just wanted to keep it very hush hush. So they they hired my mom to look after her. So she knew full what well what Alzheimer's was firsthand. So I think that's immediately why she became so depressed. For sure. For sure. So. Okay, so let's go back to the initial question about your dad. Um, oh, sorry, about your mom dealing with your dad's passing while being sick. Um, how? What kind of experience was that like in terms of having to go through the entire funeral process and, you know, dealing with family and, and just going through your father's death while you have a sick mom? Um, that was hard. It, it was hard because I now had to compartmentalize my feelings. So, um, and remember, I'm here. Like, so I'm here. My mom is there. Right. And my brother's there. And, um, you know, he was obviously in panic mode, shock mode, because my dad had a massive heart attack and he died. He wasn't sick. Right. So it was a shock work to all of us. Of course. And then plus now mom is sick. So it's like, uh, uh, okay. So um, I remember my brother and, you know, at the time saying to me before I even got there, like, Karen, you cannot react. Like, you basically, I can't grieve. I was not allowed to grieve because if you know anything about Alzheimer's and they're so confused, they're going to mimic your behavior. So if I'm sad, my mom's going to even be sadder, right? And then if she falls into, a, like, a deep depression, it could be really, really bad. Like yeah, she, she doesn't know how to get back out of it. Right, she wouldn't be able to. And, and it would be really, really difficult for us right. to manage that behavior. So... I had to like not like even at the like even in the church no crying like no crying no I up to now have not really fully grieved for my father because it's I haven't had time did she do you do you feel like in the moment she knew what was going on like was she still uh, you know aware enough to know what was happening or was she very confused and had no idea what was going on no, like, she, she I think she did because when I first got there she's like Karen, he's dead. Like, dead. Dead. I'm like, well, I think she's she got it. <laughs> yeah, she got it. Mm. So, I was like, yeah, okay. You know, like, you don't stop. You, you I could know. not react. Yeah. Like, so I was like, yeah, 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 he is. Yeah. You know? And then, you know, we're, we're Catholic, and typically you bury. That's, you know, um, in Catholicism, that's typical. Now, there's cremation, but like, I'm pretty sure my dad probably would have wanted to be buried. However, um, when my brother asked my mom, and he didn't just ask her once, he asked her like on three separate occasions, like, what are, what's your what preference? Do you, what, what do you, you want like? for dad? And she said cremation every single time. So, mm -hmm. so she kind, um, she must have known, right? Like, you know. Yeah. So, got it. Yeah, that was that was a tough time, very tough time. Sure, for sure. Okay. Um, Which ah, we obviously are talking about this for a reason. So, needless to say, unfortunately, when this diagnosis happens, don't do what my dad did, and my well, it was hard. We can't tell my mom what not to do because she's ill. But like when you can't talk about the disease, it creates such a problem. And it created, a, it, it was double for me because my dad was in denial. There's no outlet, you have no right. outlet. He's like, he was like, I'm going, <sighs> okay, he used to go to these Catholic prayer groups and he's like, she's gonna be healed. And I'm like, okay, well in the interim, let's try to do some other things. But that's, 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 my go-to person and that's what he was saying right she's getting prayed for and she'll be healed and so we didn't talk about the reality and next steps and then now now you pass away now now, now what left. yeah now what you didn't tell me what to do you didn't you didn't guide me okay we didn't make plans yeah yeah Ugh. but fortunately my brother is a very and he's a lawyer, so even double. So, um, you know, power of attorney had to be done for my mom. Right. Um, right and these away. are the things that you don't think about 
at all until you're forced in a position to have to think about it, right? So, okay, Brianna. Um, and I feel like even, you know, going through this, not to totally deter, but, you know, after losing my dad as well a couple years back, knock on wood, I mean, he was the first person immediately so close front line to me that I had ever lost, um, where I had to understand what goes into death and funeral planning and arrangements and tying things up and actually going and making sure that paperwork is done. It was just an overwhelming experience and process and they don't really make it easier for the person who's grieving. I mean, spouse, children, whoever, like, I mean, unfortunately they're doing their job and they have their steps that they need to take. But when you're still going through the shock of losing somebody that you love, it it's not an easy process. So that was very eye-opening for me. So I can just imagine how in shock everything was for you with everything happening, bam, 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 all at the same time. Because things, because my father um, was in Trinidad at the time, like, and, you know, dual citizenship, things have to be wrapped up in both countries. Like, it, it's, it's a lot it's of a lot. paperwork right. and a lot of, um, you know, last, his last income taxes and then his, funeral and you know my brother did a lot of his stuff there like all of his stuff there I can't say a lot he did all of it and you know but then I had mom to deal with and you know so yeah it's tough and it's when you don't talk about it it's guess you're guessing it's all guesswork at that point and winging it really I mean it's um it's tough because again you don't really have time to grieve especially when you're a new mom and especially when you wear so many hats and you've got responsibilities and you have to work and you have to take care of your kids and you got to take care of your home you got a husband and you've got you know the rest of your family and you've got this arrangement that like it, it's 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 a lot it's a lot it's a lot so and he was as you know he was like the the head right mm -hmm. he was like the real head of you know he was the go-to person yeah like for everything, like for me, anyways, like I, he was my okay. I don't listen to him, <laughs> but I still ran everything by him. Like I still appreciated yes. the sounding board. Yes. And when he's gone, and and now it's like, uh oh, we didn't even talk about this. We didn't, we didn't decide what we're doing with mom, and we didn't, you know, we didn't have any major conversations about this disease. Mm -hmm. And um what had happened the last time i saw my father was 9 11 and um if and i know it's a horrible time so it's double for me but um he was grounded because he was at an airport conference he was the manager of the airport and um he was grounded in he he was at a conference in montreal at the time and he was grounded because he couldn't get a flight back home so i guess it, my luck I got to see my father. Mm. So my parents came and at least he got to spend time with Jalen and you know um, at that point I can he we had an honest conversation and he was like yeah this is tough like he, he goes I have to put out your mom's clothes and I have to help her get dressed like yeah I guess he was he finally accepted that life has changed this is how this yeah. is the new normal mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. And of course, he died. What, uh, two weeks later? So, yeah, that's that's a tough pill. I mean, it. Regardless, it's always tough. But when it's unexpected like that, that's, you know, with my dad. Unfortunately, he was he was very ill before he passed. But we were given like a full year to at least you know, have with him and and leave nothing unsaid and experience whatever we could every moment we could so it was a little bit different but again then you see the opposite spectrum of watching the person that you love deteriorate that's why i'm picking that one if really? i have to, yeah if i have to pick i'm i'm signing up for the heart attack oh your dad you mean oh yeah okay instead of watching this duration oh, yeah. yeah yeah okay i, I, th the... I thought you meant your mom like no you want to watch the person deteriorate. No, no, no. I'm like, i want no, no. the heart attack <laughs> Sudden, Make it fast. Bye. Yeah. Sorry, couldn't say goodbye. Yeah. Peace out. Sorry to hear that, leading lady. It's always tough. Yeah. It's always tough. Pat, Enzo, good evening. Thank you for watching. Um, so let's let's change. Yeah. Let's, let's change, change the this. channel. Yeah, because it's a bit this uh, is morbid. 
whenever we start talking about daddies, I, my heart starts to ache a little bit. So, um, questions and concerns. You guys, we're always open for whatever topics or anything that you guys have um, off the top. If you're going through this type of journey and you're confused. Why don't you tell them about um, Kai and Lily? They're oh, they're much now. better. They're my tribe has returned. They're in the mend. Mama Trust Bear. me, 120%. <laughs> Mama Bear is very happy. Mm-hmm. I'm very, very relieved. Guys, this flu strain was redonkulous. Like, yes, I said it because it was horrific <laughs> with all capital letters and exclamation points following. It was horrendous. Like, when I think about anybody I don't like, I wouldn't even wish this on them. Okay? <laughs> That's how bad this thing was. It came through my house like a tsunami. Yes, I said that too. Yes, it did. And it was really bad. 10 days. 10 days my kids were out of it. Fever, diarrhea, vomiting, like bloody noses, just lethargic, could not eat, could not drink. Could It, it was horrible la, 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 la. so i'm just gr- i'm glad that everybody's back on i'm going to answer that question sorry i'm done well they're great now trust me they're 110% what my babies yeah yes okay so how did i oh my gosh i don't know i really don't know the question is how did i manage and do you, do i think it affected my son Yes, I do. I really do think it affected him. Um, His whole life has been this disease and he's had to just understand that it's PSWs and nurses and, you know, caregivers and, you know, seeing me stressed and I try not to, I not try not to present, but, you know, I'm only human. Sometimes I just, you know, can't take it either. Like this week, that's how it felt this week. It felt like, it felt heavy. It just felt very heavy. Um, sorry to hear that, Abigail. Condolences. Oh, yeah. Sorry to hear that. It was a tough one today. It was a tough one today. It was tough. Like, uh, well, okay. I always say, like, I'm part of this uh, group, and sometimes they have funny things, even though they're not funny. Like, we talk about it's funny. At, but it's not funny. Yes. It's so, funny yeah. now, but going through it, it, no. But yesterday, what made me laugh was, I'm getting so fed up of the invisible person my mom's talking to. <laughs> I've had it. <laughs> got a couple choice words for that person. I've had it with my mom and the invisible person she's talking to. <laughs> oh. Well, that was a good laugh. That was was. a nice laugh (laughs) to be able to, you know, finish us off here because, yeah, it's getting a little... It's getting heavy, and it is heavy. heavy. It is. I I try to prepare myself every single day, and I know I'm not going to be able to. No, you you can't. Like, you know, yesterday, um, but it's like a typical day, and I I just think, like, this should not be a typical day, but, like, uh, when the the nurse comes to check her bed sores, and like I said, they're, like, basically gone now um and then you just see my mom my mom like really thin like just boned and that's hard to watch it's really hard to watch uh you were making mention of the amount of views we've been getting recently guys that's overwhelming it's amazing um yes wow (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said she reunited with her childhood play friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we just wanted to take a minute before we we uh, end off here just to really give thanks to all you guys who've been sharing, commenting, um, watching our loyal viewers that consistently come to tune in each week, week, week in and week out. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed and it's definitely not a pre- not um underappreciated or it is appreciated I should say we are very grateful for all the support and um we hope that you continue to to do that and do so so that we can fund these wonderful things that you're doing well you have to do something light we can't just end on that like this today was like really depressing well, sometimes it has to be that no, way no it can't be it can't be 
I already had a mint. Okay, so then you do no, something. No, Why no. does it gotta fall on me? Because that's just you. You're in the entertainment. I am? You're a dancer. I am? Yeah. I'm not the professional dancer. Nope. Nope. I'm not. Like, I'm a dancer, but... <laughs> okay, Lion Queen. Easy. Easy. Stop it. Okay? Don't Stop make, it. Don't make me pull it. Stop it right now. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> So you got you to laugh. <laughs> because that's funny. Mm-hmm. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, when I'm a little better, I will share my okay, story. Okay, yes. Would love it. Would love to yes, share Yes, we would look story. forward is, to that. Abigail. You know, if you feel very comfortable, that means a lot too, when you're comfortable. And open forum. We're all here. No judgment. You know, sharing is caring. Do it, Wendy. See? Do it. Damn, why don't you yell? Ew. Do what? You know. What? What oh. are we doing? Oh. What are we doing? Tell me. I don't know. What do you feel like? Tell me. What's What's inspiring you? What right are we now? doing? What are we doing? Tell me. Let me hear it. <laughs> I'm so happy I caught you live. Oh, oh I, I know. She's all the way in Ireland. Ireland. Well, thank you for that. I am not busting anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they don't going, know about that. They don't know about that. Aren't you going to Ireland? Yes. So you guys could hook up. We'll do it in person. You Lou. can do the hoods. We're quick. gonna. Huh, we're whoa, gonna. Whoa. Huh. <laughs> whoa. In Dublin. Be there or be. So what happens in Dublin stays in Dublin. Is that how it goes? She lives there, so that doesn't work. Okay, let's let's end the podcast. Let's. Let's. She see robots. Let's they want robots. The podcast. <laughs> see, and you want to be a hater every single podcast. Oh, you're doing the thing. I'm gonna stop. See, now I'm getting requests. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you're getting. Requests. You're like a DJ. I like you to dance the robot. <laughs> Request number two hundred and sixty. I know. Right. I'm looking forward to seeing you too, Lou. It's been so long. I can't. Even, I don't even know how many years it's been since I've seen you. And that's terrible. Okay. You're not doing it? I did it. Really? Yeah, that was a five second deal. Hmm. I think they got little gypped. Oh, coming from Miss Hateration herself. Look, I didn't say I wanted you to be the real. You're getting requests from other people. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I didn't say it. Wait for it. Other people are, are requesting it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, too many years. Oh, I thought you meant too many requests. See, I was just about to do it. See that, Too Luan? many years. See that, Luann? Focus. Mm-hmm. Locked down. Locked up. We're done. <laughs> That's a wrap. I was watching... What was You're still show? dancing. What was that show? That um, housewife show. It's it's hilarious. Um, the Black Girls. Real Housewife of Atlanta. Atlanta. And there's another one. There's a Potomac one. Oh. Those girls with the... That's what they do in the States. Yeah. I was kind of laughing. My daughter and I was like, I've got to turn this off because she's going to start doing this stuff. I know. Mm, mm, mm. And, uh, uh. Okay, I'm done. Do it, Wendy Robot. No, Luann. No. <laughs> Luann, you cut off. We're done. Maybe in, when, you know, you guys are in Ireland and I tune in to your podcast, I'll be doing my... We'll rope, do, what rope, do we have to do there? Rope. What, the a river dance? We're gonna go now. I'm trying to be politically correct. Stop and appropriate. it. What? Immediately. Effective immediately. Stop the madness. We'll do river dance, Lou. Isn't I that... said it and I'll say it again. Isn't that from Scotland? No, it's Irish. Okay, gotta go, guys. Thank you for <laughs> Thank you for watching as usual. We are very grateful. You guys have a blessed week. We will see you next week. And uh, if there's any questions, concerns, or topics that you want us to cover or talk about hit her up in the dm the dm what does dm stand for for those that are not technologically inclined in the inbox okay <laughs> direct message yes, that's in what the it inbox. stands for yes we love you all and i we have to say thank you we you started that but it's we have eleven thousand views
share keep sharing yeah so please share, share keep sharing I we appreciate it look it's all the way in in Ireland that's one this is the worm I, are you sure that's the worm it is now no the worm is that thing you do on the ground like I'm not doing it but like you know that's not the worm Peace and love. We will see you next week. Guys, be blessed. Stay healthy. Okay? Love each other. Bye.